Okay, well, welcome. Uh, this month's webinar is on sustainability management program basics. Um, and today you have Krista and I kind of sharing our knowledge and expertise of working in this field for several years. Um, but we'd also love to make this sort of interactive and fair best practices. So I do encourage you to, um, you know, chime in. I don't mind interruptions if you have questions or you want to um, comment on something or feel free to use the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, you know who we are, right? Our mission is to advance sustainable principles and practices forward through the power of business. Um, and we do this through education series like this, through our Green Masters program tool that helps you measure and improve your sustainability outcomes and by helping facilitate connection amongst businesses working on sustainability. Uh, I just love to remind you all of all the great benefits that you have. So educate is a huge part of that. Um, we do have uh, two working groups actively right now, one on greenhouse gas and the other focused on the new Green Masters program. So if you want more information about either of those or how to participate in the working groups, feel free to email Krista or myself. Uh, it's a great way to connect with other members and continue to work on advancing your own sustainability in your organization. And if you aren't aware that we just launched a new Green Masters program that is now live, um, very exciting time for us. So uh, if you need or want the link to how to get registered for that, um, just let us know and we'll drop that in the chat. All right, so what is our agenda for today? This is what we're gonna cover. Um, we're gonna talk about what are five key components of a successful sustainability program. We'll talk through some ways that you can structure sustainability in your organization for success. We will talk about the continuous improvement cycle. Um, we'll look at how to create KPIs for sustainability and data normalization, how to establish a baseline, uh, how to set good goals and uh, how to evaluate and adjust. All right, so I am going to launch a poll here. Uh, and I just like to do this, it helps uh, me understand where you're at in your sustainability journey. So I can kind of speak to that um, as we go through the uh, webinar today. So if you could just answer where you are in your sustainability journey in your company, are you just getting started? Um, you've implemented a few projects, you're gathering metrics, um, you have established basic baseline. Uh, you can also answer more than one, just so you know, if there's more than one that apply to you. Um, if you're working on goals or if you've been doing this for a while and you're just kind of hoping for a bit of uh, kind of refresher. So I will give it just one more minute. It looks like most of you have participated. So, all right. So we are uh, kind of across the board here, uh, which is kind of what I <laughs> expect. Uh, so it's just about right across the middle, a couple of you just getting started, a couple of you just having implement implemented projects, um, some of you in that data gathering phase, um, whether it's grabbing metrics or figuring out your baseline or what um, KPIs you want. Um, working on goals sometimes can be uh, challenging. So I see a few of you there at that juncture. And then uh, we have a couple of you who have been doing this for a while that might be able to share some tips and tricks with the whole group. So thank you for that. I am closing the poll. All right. So to dive in, I'm going to start with this slide that talks about what are the five key components to a successful sustainability program. Um, the first is commitment. So you need to have a commitment from your organization or at the personal level, right? Sometimes this looks different for each company. This can look like a sustainability commitment statement. Um, in some companies, they relate it to uh, like sustainability policy um, or vision statement for the organization. I do recommend that this is something that you work on continuously throughout 
uh, your process in building and integrating a sustainability program is it's something that we like to call sort of your true north, right? It guides you throughout and helps you stay focused on what's a priority to your organization. If you don't currently have commitment statement, I encourage you to think about what that means for your organization and to start to have dialogues with others about what does your company's specific commitment look like to sustainability? And there's no right or wrong answer here, right? Um, it, it should align with your overall company mission, vision, goals. Ideally, it might not initially, but the goal would be to bridge those over time. Uh, so if you haven't created that commitment statement, like I said, I think we have some resources on that if you would uh, like them or some examples. So the second piece is metrics that matter. Uh, several of you had mentioned you're working on metrics gathering. Uh, that's important, but why we say metrics that matter is because um, you don't wanna create more work for yourself or your team, right? You want to be measuring the things that are most material to your organization that you have influence over or that you can address over the long term. So what are the key metrics for your organization in the areas that are material to your organization? The third is a code of conduct. Uh, different companies organize this in a different way. Sometimes it's a ethics code. Sometimes it's a supplier code of conduct. Um, it could look like policies in the organization. So these are the pieces that then help work kind of through that integration piece and help you to really um, state and formalize what your organization um, sort of does in each of the different categories. So this could be through purchasing, through supply. Um, it could just be an employee code of conduct, right? So this is just a way to help add sustainability to the different layers of your organization structure. So impact and actions, this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, you need to align you know, your actions with what's impactful for the organization um, and continue to strive uh, to make changes in those areas. Uh, and then the last is dynamic engagement. This is often the hardest component uh, and it's dynamic engagement from the standpoint of this is really where you get to change the culture of the organization so that it's everybody's job to um, care about sustainability, to have directive over sustainability, to have uh, authority in some way, shape, or form, or to really just be engaged overall in that commitment that you've set for your company. All right, so the next component is really the strategic pillars of sustainability. So the first piece is transformational drivers. There are all kinds of things happening in the external environment that can be distracting, can also really help inform your direction. So understanding what the important drivers are for your organization and building a strategy that reflects those important drivers. So, um, you know, for example, if you're in the automotive industry, a huge driver in that industry right now is electrification, right? So what does this mean to your company and what are you going to do um, about that in terms of a strategic overall company level? The second piece is the financial impact. So sustainability makes business sense, <laughs> but don't chase things that don't make business sense to your overall organization um, unless there is some value for it, right? So helping understand what the financial implications really are can really help build the strategic business case. And they have to align with the way your company does business. So getting your CFO engaged, um, your COO, your CEO, if possible, uh, really helps with the strategic alignment. So we'll talk a little bit more about structure today. Structure is just how do you organize sustainability within your overall organization uh, by understanding what are your core competencies, um, both from an organizational standpoint, but also from a personnel standpoint. Um, and then how can you use that structure to drive um, transformation throughout 
Um, we talk a lot about materiality um, at WSBC. It's an important component to helping you understand what to focus on in sustainability. Uh, we just did a webinar, I think it was two months ago, about all about materiality. So if you haven't seen that or you're interested in learning more, I would reference um, that webinar for you. Uh, it's important to understand what your methodology for, for determining the materiality inside your company is. There are numerous methodologies that you could take and then what's the value proposition? Sometimes this is different for different companies, depending on how you're organized, who are your primary stakeholders, um, understanding, you know, a cost a service business that has a customer facing uh, value proposition would look different in terms of materiality than, you know, um, a potential manufacturer, either that's privately held or publicly held. So understanding what your diff who your different stakeholders are that are important to the process, defining those, um, and then understanding the value for each of them is a component of that materiality. And then finally, integrating systems. We also talked a lot about this, and it's kind of how we redesigned the Green Masters program, is to really take systems thinking to the next level to be able to integrate sustainable business management across your organization. So you want to leverage the systems that you already have in place in your organization and weave sustainable components into them. All right, I'm going to pause there to see if anybody has any quick questions before moving on. All right, so I'm going to next talk a little bit about structure. Uh, again, these are examples. There's not really a right or wrong way to structure sustainability in an organization. Again, it needs to align with your corporate culture. It needs to align with your corporate value system or your business models, right? So these are just a few examples. Um, Pre-structural is really like no set structure, right? This is kind of where a lot of companies start out. But I, if you're in that spot, I would consider you to start thinking about uh, what could the structure be inside of your organization? So standalone is one option. This is where it's kind of a separate high profile team that usually directs report uh, um, reports directly up to leadership. Uh, not thinking of a, a quick example here, um, but a lot of times different business units um, companies with a lot of different business units will use this type of structure um, and kind of sustainability becomes like a department inside of the organization. Embedded is sort of what I personally think is the goal for most companies, although that's not always true again, but I think this model is represents sort of the systems thinking where sustainability kind of becomes everybody's job inside the organization. This model is, you know, really just integrating sustainability across the different job functions in the organization. So everybody has some level of understanding and responsibility over it. Um, a distributed structure is uh, each business unit has a team. Uh, so different than standalone where it's a separate department. If you're a business model that has multiple um, departments or business units, then this would be kind of um, a sustainability focus over each of those departments that kind of, you know, maybe drives procurement or maybe drives product development or maybe drives um, business development even. Um, and then market facing, this one's quite uh, different, but it's for products and services that are sustainable focus that are really market facing. Uh, and so um, then a lot of times this is determined by customers and what customer needs are. So again, there's no real right way. Um, when I was in the sustainability manager position, uh, I had a green team. We had a uh, for store locations, for retail locations, an essential office, an essential kitchen. I had one team 
initially per location and found through that process that the t the individual locations really wanted more interface with the different locations. And so then we evolved to a team that was into more integrated. And so we had representatives from each um, location uh, as a part of the team. And that really helped sort of um, with, I'll call it cross pollinating with generating ideas across different locations. Um, they felt more like a team, like they weren't separate. So really it's kind of finding what works best for your business structure, your organizational structure, um, and having a champion is a great place to start. So if that's where you're at, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, working on getting some sort of leadership buy-in or support will help with driving initiatives, right? So really we want sustainability to be bottom up and top down, but you're not going to be able to make a lot of long-term uh, change if you don't have support at the higher level. All right, so don't feel like you have to have your structure before you get started. Um, that can kind of come and morph and change over time. So this is the cycle that we use that follows the plan, do, check, to act cycle for is sort of setting a roadmap to develop your sustainability program. So we talked about assessing your material topics. Once you have your material topics, from then from there, you can kind of set what your business priorities for either the short or long-term are, right? You might be able to say, uh, okay, right now we're going to focus on these five things, but we know in three to five years, we also need to focus on these other things, say um, greenhouse gas. You know, right now you're not to the point where you are there yet, but you want to start collecting energy and water data. So um, set your business priorities and then plan to figure out how you can collect systems that you'll be able to, or de design systems that you'll be able to embed across the organization. Once you have sort of that data from there, you can set metrics and goals and continue to sort of execute projects and evaluate and adjust. And the Green Masters program is really designed to help you be in this continuous improvement cycle. So again, you can't address every risk or pursue every opportunity. And so the material issues are ones that really affect your overall organization from a credibility standpoint, from a risk standpoint, from an operational standpoint, from a financial standpoint, and start there, depending on how you're organized, um, and then weave in your key stakeholders, right? Your key stakeholders could be your employees, they could be um, your customers, they could be suppliers, they could be shareholders, um, they could be owners, um, they could be family members, depending on how you're organized. But identify those groups and really sit down with them and figure out what's the most important now um, so that you're not biting off more than you can chew in the long term. You want to set yourself up for success. <clears throat> and so the Green Masters program, again, has this process signed into it. So once you have your business priorities, then what? <clears throat> so in the Green Masters program, again, these are the 15 categories. So they're organized by what we call dimension. So you have environment, society, workforce, governance, and leadership. If you're brand new, by setting yourself up for success, we mean pick three to five, no more than five priority areas. Um, if you've been at this for a while and you have five priority areas, you can expand that to seven or nine. Um, really, what's unique about the Green Masters program is it's only going to score you based on the priorities that you're focusing on in that moment. Um, so you can build yourself up for success, get recognition, and grow that over time. All right, so once you have that information and you have figured out what your business priorities are, so say energy has risen to the top as one of your main priorities, figure out 
what you're doing to manage this topic now. So what is the current state? What data do you have available? What is the quality of that data? What management practices do you have in place for energy management across your facilities? Um, look at your current initiatives. Just understand uh, you know, your sources, where that data is coming from, and sort of map out where you are today. Um, once you've done that, you can start thinking about, okay, what is our future state on energy? So we want to become more efficient. We you know, eventually might want to collect our greenhouse gas data. Um, from there, we might want to set a carbon uh, reduction goal or an overall net zero goal. Uh, you know, what is that future state look like for your company? Again, there's there's no wrong answers here. What is what makes sense for your organization? And then from there, you can kind of bridge where you are today and where you want to be to figure out how you're going to get there. Um, and so sort of helping build that roadmap um, is understanding how you will measure your progress along the way uh, and how what data points you need, um, what data points you want to gather, what systems. You know, a lot of times we start out collecting all of this data manually. <laughs> um, and then over time, we grow to more sophisticated systems. And you don't have to grow to sophisticated systems either. Doing it manually works if you're a smaller um, organization. So again, what's your current state? What's your desired future state? And how might you get there? Um, and think about this both from a strategic level and a tactical level. So at this point, once you've sort of mapped your current and future state for all of your business priorities, um, it's a really good time to stop and have conversations with your team, with um, your group, with leadership, um, with ownership about, okay, here is what we see for a future state. Are you in alignment? Get feedback along the way. You don't want to do all of the work ahead of time and then realize you're not in alignment with leadership. So bring them in, have them be a part of the conversation. We really recommend having them help set your material topics, the materiality priorities and your business priorities um, that will jumpstart the conversation. And so then once you've done sort of this work, you can revisit that conversation with them and then figure out what resources you need to get to that, that uh, future state. You know, in some cases it might be technology. It might be, you need more training. It might be that you need, um, you know, a, a different type of uh, maybe an EHS manager, you know, just mapping that out, how you're going to help get to that future state. All right, and then um, developing systems. This is a huge part of the Green Masters program. Uh, the way that we ask and talk about um, the way we ask the questions inside the tool, and we uh, um, is meant to help you develop systems. So if you don't have these systems in place, think of these as um, what you can be doing and should be doing to develop those systems. So again, sticking with the energy example, you know, you have to start with measuring and managing your overall energy use. So what is it going to take to get to that point? Um, make sure you have good data, make sure you're tracking it easily, um, energy can sometimes be an easy one, but sometimes difficult, depending. So um, figure out where you need to go to get that information and then start normalizing that data. So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in upcoming slides here, but you want to think about normalization metrics that make sense for your organization and your business type. Okay, so you have your data, you have a normalization, you can create a baseline from here. So where is your starting point um, baseline? That is where you sort of um, are able to set goals. Um, and so you understanding your current state with this so that you know how you're gonna achieve your future state. So once you have your current baseline, from there, you can establish um, what your goals are going to be. I mentioned early on, sometimes this can be a time-consuming um, process, is you really want to have smart goals. And we'll talk again a little bit more about that. 
um, coming up. Once you have your goals, how are you going to achieve those goals? What again? What again? What resources do you need to get to that point? Um, so once you have a plan, then how are you integrating that um, into everyday business? So for energy, for example, um, if a production facility site. Is the operations team engaged in the energy management process? Um, a lot of times they're not. A lot of times they're disconnected. So um, getting them engaged in that conversation, looking at those metrics on a regular basis. Um, in the program, we you know, recommend it can be a month. It can be um, weekly. It could be quarterly. It could be annually. Um, start with plugging into a way that, again, <laughs> make sense for your organization. I know I say that a lot, but I really mean that. Like, do you have quarterly meetings already that you can, maybe you have a safety meeting, maybe there's an operations meeting. Um, you know, what are the um, current ways that you communicate inside the organization that you can plug into? And then who's responsible overall for managing and measuring this data? Who's responsible for um, the metrics? for the goals, <clears throat> we highly recommend defining that and communicating that out. That will allow for accountability towards the um, overall goals that you're setting for yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me a minute. Mm. And then last, if you, um, share those with employees. You can also share those um, publicly or with a larger stakeholder group. So that was looking at systems development through the lens of energy. The same sort of applies across the environmental metrics. When you get into the social and governance metrics, it's a little different. Uh, but generally for environmental metrics, this sort of systems process is the same. All right, and um, Krista, was I gonna hand it over to here or the next section? Next section. Next section, thank you, okay. Um, let me see here. All right, so developing key performance indicators, KPIs. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that. I'm sure your company creates some sort of KPIs if they're not in sustainability. Um, there's other metrics that they're tracking. I highly recommend starting this process by understanding what they're already tracking, right? So how can the data that you're collecting um, match the way that your company already reads and sees data? Ooh, there's some on uh, automation here. Okay, so what is a key performance indicator? It's a qualifiable measure used to evaluate the success of an organization in meeting objectives. So um, lagging is results oriented, historical after the fact, or leading is in real time processing, monitoring, allowing, allowing for immediate correction. Uh, either way, again, start with where you're at. Uh, you want to ideally get to the point where you can see and read data and evaluate KPIs in real time. Um, that takes some sophistication. So again, set it up as a goal if you're not currently there or your company doesn't look at KPIs in that way currently. Um, the type and amount of KPIs you measure is dependent upon the business needs and goals that you're trying to achieve. So again, look at your materiality understand what your current and your future state are to set what KPIs make the most sense for your um, for that business priority. Um, so measuring KPI is an essential practice that will allow you to track, manage, and control the sustainability level uh, of your business. So I'm sure you've heard before what gets um, measured and managed um, is what you can improve upon. You can't manage what you don't measure because um, how the saying goes. So, you, you know, you want to measure, you want to um, illustrate to your leadership teams that you understand the language of business that they're speaking. Um, and again, aligning this with the way that they look at data 
um, across the organization um, will really help you um, establish success. Um, and it also helps you identify potential future improvements, right? So looking at where your gaps are, looking in where uh, maybe your data holes are, um, evaluating your data can just really help you identify um, both that current state, that baseline, but then also what you wanna focus on going forward. So for example, sticking with the energy data um, for, if you know if you've collected your energy data and you see that there are potential spikes or changes, um, there are sometimes can be simple things that you can do, like moving production to a, a non-peak time or balancing out shifts or um, understanding that you ha might have an energy leak somewhere. Um, a lot of times this happens through maybe compressed natural gas, natural air, or uh, inside of a facility. So allow that data to inform you on what's happening um, and use it to your advantage to sharing well, with um, you know, your other team members. And then KPIs are used to close the gap between current and desired future states. So we'll talk again about creating SMART goals um, and how this helps you um, moving forward. So here are um, some examples of KPIs across sustainability. I um, will <laughs> click through these, but I'd also love to hear um, if you have current KPIs in place. If you you know can either come off mute and share or just type in the chat, what are the KPIs that you're currently um, have set up for your organization? Sure. So a few on here are, you know, carbon footprint, energy consumption, product recycling rate, saving levels due to conservation and improvement efforts, supplier environmental sustainability index, supply chain miles. Um, I know that that's one that we tracked historically, how far and distance were um, our supplies coming from. Um, you can check water footprint, waste reduction, waste recycling rate. Uh, some people do a landfill diversion rate, um, recycled reused content in products. Um, if you're a product manufacturer, um, non-renewable materials used in products. Um, these are all examples. Um, don't be shy. I'm sure that some of you have some KPIs in place. Um, if you do, I would love to hear what you're tracking as an example. We'll also ask something similar again shortly. So um, feel free to get involved. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got oh, one. Yeah, Leah, great. Um, Leah's saying energy consumption, water, and waste reduction. So yes, great, great place to start. Absolutely. Those are kind of the big three in terms of getting going, getting started. Um, recycled waste, Julia's saying, yep. All right. Hey, Jesse, just one more. Um, yeah. We're also measuring our metrics in terms of um, that which is going to incineration and anaerobic digestion. Um, those are some things that our um, facilities team is, is looking at as well um, in terms of landfill um, diversion. Great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Erin. Any others? Or any questions about, I think this is a KPI. I uh, think I am close to creating one or we've been talking about this. Um, all right. Well, feel free to, uh, again, type your questions in the chat or um, just come off mute and share them. All right, so developing KPIs, De again, step one, determining what's material, important. We talk a lot about that, as I mentioned. Um, establish organizational goals for sustainability. So we talked about kind of current future state in each topic. But again, remember I went back to the beginning, a starting point is really the commitment. So 
how can your overall organizational goals be in alignment with that commitment for sustainability? So what do you want to do in each of your priority areas? But what do you want to accomplish overall as an organization? Um, and then cascading those goals into specific objectives. Uh, a good example of this might be, um, you know, overall, if you have like a organizational goal to become carbon neutral, right? Then how can you look at what API, what metrics you're tracking and what goals you're establishing um, to develop a KPI that is in alignment with helping you measure how you will achieve that over time? <clears throat> Um, assess the current level of performance. Again, that's kind of, you know, where are you at today, your current state, um, what is your baseline and target, <clears throat> and then est establishing a cadence to review that, again, this is a part of the systems development component. So um, that message is sort of reiterated through each of these processes, right? So um, you're doing that sort of at an overall corporate level. You might be doing that um, in each one of these uh, categories or business priority areas, and then you're also doing that when you're developing and setting up um, your your KPIs. All right, so some tips for getting started um, or maybe enhancing KPIs. Uh, start with what you have. Use the data that you have accessible to you. Again, we talked about what are your gaps, right, and how can you get to your future state. So don't stress too much currently um, about that. Just start with where you're at. You can always add data in over time. Be willing to build upon them over time, right? Um, like I had kind of gave our green team example. Uh, you know, we also started with normalization metrics for uh, overall sales um, inside of our organization. And then we realized that as our footprint, footprint grew as an organization, we wanted to add in a metric um, normalizing by square footage. So, you know, again, start with where you're at and build on those KPIs over time. Um, be aware of negative impacts or trade-offs when making improvements. I think this is going back to that systems thinking perspective, right? Um, sometimes changing on a material might have really good benefits from, um, you know, a, a product um, circularity standpoint, but then make sure you understand what the effects of, you know, product quality and use on the back end are. Uh, that's just one example. There are lots of trade-offs in sustainability. So really, you know, doing your research and understanding um, what those trade-offs are is important. Um, and then enlist the guidance of your stakeholders, right? Like we talked about defining who your stakeholders are, uh, your employees, your uh, potential customers, um, your current customers, your community, your you know fellow WSBC members are all here to support you in this process. So, um, you know, if you're wondering if your KPI is on target or just even maybe how to collect some of the data, feel free to leverage your um, community to ask questions. All right, any other tips or tricks that anyone wants to share that they have learned um, with developing KPIs? All right, um, I think Krista, this is where I'm gonna hand it over to you. Yes, thank you. All right. All right, so I get to pick up from where Jesse left off and talk a little bit about data normalization. Jesse, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, so when we say normalization, essentially we mean adjusting your metrics to a consistent scale, and that will allow you to account for external forces, such as, for example, increased production or changing costs. Essentially, normalizing data allows you to evaluate your performance over time. So um, I'll give an example. Jesse talked a little bit about, um, you know, measuring um, in her prior role um, 
and and using factors like sales or square footage to normalize, let's say, energy use. Um, we've been using that metric. So for some facilities, right, um, Jesse was in a retail space. So maybe for a production space, you might say, okay, really the main driver for energy usage for us is how much we're producing, right? Um, but you don't want to be penalized because you've increased production. That's not the goal, right? To lower production in order to achieve um, improvements. So, all right, I see a question come in from Leah and I think we'll maybe talk a little bit about that um, as we cover some more, Leah. Um, so uh, it allows you really normalizing, um, can allow you to account for changes over time that aren't really to do with that specific factor. So for energy use, for example, you might increase production over time, uh, but maybe you also achieve energy efficiencies, right? And so it allows you to look at your actual practices around a specific topic um, and evaluating you know, external factors aside, right? Whether you're growing as a company or increasing production or expanding your facilities, uh, that you can still achieve improvements over time and not be penalized for some of those um, external factors or forces. Um, so again, the goal here would be to allow you to evaluate your performance over time. Next slide, please. So some of the factors you might use to normalize or adjust the metrics in question uh, would be, for example, um, the number or weight or units of production. Maybe it's sales, maybe it's hours worked at the facility, maybe it's number of employees, right? Maybe it's gallons of water per employee. Um, again, it really depends on your specific situation, your specific facility, and understanding what drives your performance in each of those um, topics or areas of sustainability, and then what are external factors that you should account for that don't really drive your performance or performance improvement over time. Next slide. So some examples of normalization factors might be, um, let's say we're talking about energy, right? Maybe it's BTU per revenue dollar or per unit of product shipped. Um, again, right, Jesse used the example of um, per square footage, right? So maybe um, how much space you have is something you can't really control, right? You can't use less energy necessarily because you have to still wipe the same amount of space, but maybe you're expanding space. Um, so gallons of water per revenue dollar or per unit of production, waste, uh, maybe it's waste to landfill per total waste generated, right? Um, all examples of, again, understanding what's kind of the core driver of your performance in that topic. And then what are external factors um, that you need to account for in order to really understand your performance over time. So we have a few examples here. Uh, I, as promised before, uh, you'll get another chance to share what are some of your methods for normalization. Um, you can either type into the chat or unmute and share. I have an example of something we hope to do, um, which is um, we're establishing our greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So doing um, like pound of CO2 equivalent per pound of cheese produced at our facility. Awesome. Excellent, thank you. And I see KBTU per square foot for energy, awesome. Anyone else like to share any of your normalization? All right. We're normalizing with the same thing for across all of our KPIs, which I don't know if that's correct or yeah. incorrect, um, but we're doing pounds through or pounds processed. So as your normalization factor. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, so that I would just kind of to answer your indirect question, it's not wrong. There's not really a wrong answer. Um, it really depends on your facility, your organization, your unique processes. And I'll just add, you know, for service-based companies, right? Again, this is going to look quite different. It's going to be more, you know, might be customers touched or or um, services sold or, uh, you know, it, it looks different for each company. So yeah, there again, there's no wrong answer. <laughs> for sure. All right. So that's kind of um, normalization in uh, a nutshell, right? Very tied to KPIs, right? Um, understanding your performance over time is an important part of that. Um, so you can really keep track of your key performance indicators over time. Um, and then Kind of part of that, again, is establishing a baseline, right? It's kind of another piece of that puzzle is understanding where you are today. And if you go to the next slide, Tessie, establishing a baseline, again, can be today, but more than anything, it's a point of reference. It's a specific point in time um, from which you seek to improve, right? So you can measure, again, changes, hopefully improvements, but changes in performance over time in those key performance indicators, normalize to account for external factors, and then movement from your current state, right? So that can be, um, it's your point of reference, whether that's today or something historical. Um, I like to use the example to demonstrate the importance of having a baseline of um, setting a goal for reducing greenhouse gas, right? A lot of times what we'll see is that companies will realize, hey, greenhouse gas is important to us. And so they'll go through the process of accounting for their greenhouse gas emissions, you know, maybe normalize it, right? They understand how they're gonna quantify greenhouse gas emissions. Um, but then because they didn't historically monitor greenhouse gas, they set a baseline for the first year that they started measuring greenhouse gas. Well, that might be after you've already implemented a bunch of energy improvements, right? So maybe you've already accomplished most of what you can accomplish to minimize greenhouse gas emissions, uh, but because you didn't have a baseline that was set far enough back, it's gonna be that much harder to achieve your goal, or maybe you won't be able to set an, as aggressive of a goal um, because you've already done a lot of the things in the near term that you would be able to do to accomplish that goal. So just you know, as an example, that baseline and where you set the baseline can be something that should be really strategic, but certainly well-informed, right? Understand, you know, maybe your baseline isn't just where you are today, maybe it's, you know, your earliest point of reference that makes sense in the context of your business. Um, so, so again, really um, determine, you know, what are you going to measure? What's the goal? Uh, where do you want to be even just a high level? Um, how are you going to measure that data? What data do you have now and what do you need to start collecting? Or what data do you have available to you historically, right? Maybe in the example of greenhouse gas, maybe you have historical energy use data that you can use to calculate your greenhouse gas emissions a little bit farther back. So you can take credit for some of the improvements you've already made. Um, so again, uh, really making an informed um, choice about your baseline can be really important, but not to say that you would use that as a way to underperform in your goals, uh, but really to capture what you're doing and how you're managing the topic. Jesse, do you want to add something? Yeah, I just was going to say uh, a lot of times with utilities, it's easy enough to go back and get historical data. So sometimes it's even just nice to trend energy use over time. If you can go back, I know sometimes they'll go back only five years, sometimes they'll go back a lot further. So um, don't be afraid to give a phone call, depending on who your providers are, to see if you can get more data from them. Or for that matter, check with your accounting um, mm -hmm. department. Your accounting department for something like energy might already be keeping track of bills or, you know, storing historical bills somewhere. So you may be able to get that through your accounting department as well. 
Um, okay, next slide, please. Oh, that's an important last point, um, Jesse. If you want to, so um, one of the key elements of establishing a baseline is um, to inform your goals, right? That that's a key element of an informed goal for that topic or that sustainability indicator. Um, Jesse and I can go on to the next one. Um, because, so this is our next topic up, right? Is how do you take your metrics, your KPIs, your kind of baseline and use those to, in to inform your goals? And when we talk about goals, we talk about SMART goals, which we'll get into a little bit more in just a moment. Um, but really the intent in here is um, that, that like all things, it's really an integrated approach to sustainability. So Jesse talked a little bit earlier about structural models for a sustainability program, right? And whatever your company's approach, wherever you fall on that spectrum, it really is important to have sustainability integrated throughout your organization. And having clear metrics and KPIs as a first step, um, having an established baseline or starting point is kind of the next step. And then from there, it's also really important to make sure you're engaging your resources internally specifically, right? So your decision makers, your employees, different business functions. Um, these are really significant elements in driving informed improvement. And that's kind of the key takeaway here is that, you know, it can be detrimental in some cases to set a goal if you don't have any concept for how you might achieve that, right? So um, driving in, informed improvement is really gonna be the key to success in goal setting. Next slide, please. And so to that end, again, we talk a lot about SMART goals. So uh, you've probably heard of this acronym, but SMART stands for specific. So what exactly are you gonna achieve? Measurable. How will you know when you've achieved that thing? Achievable, is it actually possible to achieve it? Again, um, you know, having an integrated approach to goal setting can really be significant when it comes to this achievable piece. Um, and relevant, right? How does it contribute to your company's overall strategy? So not just to your sustainability strategy, but holistically as a company, how does it tie through to what you're looking to achieve as a company and then time bound when will you achieve it so Jesse, if you'll go to the next slide um these are some examples that really take all of those elements into account right so energy our organization will decrease the amount of btus per pound again so we're taking a uh, key performance indicator normalized uh btus per pound shift by 5%, so it's specific and measurable um, in 2022. So that's the, the time bound element, right? So if you're setting this goal, you would say, okay, um, how are we gonna know when we've achieved it? So you're measuring it, right? And then is it achievable? Can we actually do this in 2022? What are some of the steps to achieving this? And then how does this contribute to our overall strategy? Those are gonna be internal, you might, you might add into this, right, some, some language around how it's achievable, right? That's, I would say, maybe more optional. Well, a decrease the amount of BTUs by 5% in 2022 by, um, you know, improving energy efficiency through XYZ, right? Um, but you might not, right? That's not a necessary component in what you communicate. Really, the elements are specific, measurable, and time-bound in how you communicate your message. Um, but having something that's achievable and relevant is important for you maybe internally um, to understand. So a few more examples here of um, SMART goals. Um, increasing the amount of waste recycled by 10% over the prior year. Uh, again, that's understanding baselines, right? Understand where you are in the prior year to inform where you're, you're gonna go. Um, and then a uh, few other examples here as well. So again, sp specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound are the key elements of goal setting. 
Now, once you've set your goals, um, so you can go on to the next slide, it's time to execute, to act. So again, we talked about our roadmap kind of being based on a plan, do, check, act cycle. Uh, so to achieve the goal you've set, it's important to make sure you have your systems in place to make sure you're able to measure, right? <laughs> um, make sure you're able, specifically, ideally integrated with other systems in the organization so it's not standalone. Um, understand and be informed by the impacts of your organization. Um, analyze your data, draw conclusions, understand how the actions that you're taking are impacting other things, again, with that systems perspective, um, and continue to accumulate that data and evaluate it as you're executing that project. Plan, do, check, act, cycle. Next slide, Jesse. And then as you go, evaluate and adjust, right? So sustainability is not one size fits all. Companies, situations, and priorities all change over time, and that's okay. So again, start where you are, take strategic integrated action, and continually improve and refine as you go. Um, and be okay with changing and be transparent about what changed and why. Uh, and like, likely your stakeholders will be comfortable with that change. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jesse to talk a little bit more and wrap us up today. All right. So we've got a couple minutes left. If you have any questions, please let us know. Um, you know, we're also always available after this um, to support your journey. I did just want to share outside of setting up your program and using the Green Masters program. Um, if you are looking for further assistance um, and either jumpstarting your progress um, we have a few ways that you can do that. Um, we have a sustainability assessment that really helps you in that uh, materiality setting um, process that takes a look at like competitors, market analysis, uh, you know, your industry, and kind of really helps um, you with an informed decision on how to set those priorities um, and uh, your business priorities and your material topics. Um, it kind of helps then create a roadmap for what you can focus on or should focus on in the next couple of years. Um, and then more on a strategic level, we have our Pathways program that kind of helps you go through this process kind of with a cohort or with a team. Um, so again, it's like a group way to, um, you know, support the process of um, figuring out your current state, future state for all of your material topics, but then also really, um, you know, we do the education on each of those topics specifically. So, um, you know, we're kind of helping you in the process understand what the kind of more global trends are in each of the area to help inform what your company wants to do. And then there's coaching through the process. Um, so those are additional ways we can help. Um, of course, we always want to invite you to our uh, upcoming events. So we have, I mentioned in the beginning, the Green Masters Program Working Group. Uh, Crystal leads that. It's uh, the second Wednesday of every month. Uh, so if you want the meeting invite for that, um, just email Krista. Um, tomorrow, actually, we have uh, an event uh, on water stewardship, uh, and that's uh, virtual. The second part of it's virtual. Uh, and then um, on June 20th, we have an in-person event, the Crash Course in Sustainability. This is resources and tools for Waukesha County businesses. Um, and if you haven't already seen, um, please save the date for our uh, annual conference this year is going to be at uh, Kuna Mutual Group, which is changing their name to True Stage. So um, by the end of the month, their name will be different, um, but it's the same building in the same location of uh, 5810 uh, Mineral Point Road in Madison. So that will be fun. And again, here's our contact information. If you need anything from us at any point in time, uh, please feel free to reach out.